All right, full supermarket tour here in Japan on a very rainy day. So let's go inside and warm up and see what they're selling and what it costs. <laughs> so naturally, when we walk in the front door, we see the fruit and veggies section first. But first things first, we can see that this is one of the most clearly labeled and organized grocery stores we've been to from bread to delicatessen to produce mm -hmm. right at the front door. And even before we get into the fruit and veggies, we've got this stand here which has all of this pre-prepared food yeah. which i gotta say it looks pretty darn fresh and well uh Tempura. well arranged and to be honest the prices are pretty good um maybe a japanese person would not love the flavor of this stuff maybe it's not the most fresh but i mean this is i think it looks like a pork cutlet with cabbage beneath it maybe some rice on the bottom for 600 yen and it looks pretty good in the packaging and the selection is huge even like some grilled fish here, potentially even eel with rice with the little seeds on top. It's so nicely done and it's only 600 yen. Uh, it's a big piece of fish. Big piece of fish. I mean, it's a good deal. Even with the egg on top, sort of looks like they just put it there in the past 10 or 15 minutes. Maybe it's old, but like this, look how the sauce is sitting there. It looks so nice, right? And I guess everything here is 600 yen, all of the pre-prepared stuff, yeah. which is a pretty good price for a meal. Very good, yeah. I mean, this is a good idea for uh, like a student or anyone yeah. trying to save money. 600 yen for a full meal is quite nice. Oh, oh, except for one, the unagi, which is the eel, uh, grilled eel, about a thousand yen. Still a fair price for what I'm led to believe is a delicacy, the grilled eel here in Thank Japan. You. And even some for 500. Wow, it's a good deal. <laughs> I can't say enough how beautiful they look. It almost looks fake. It almost looks like the display in the front of the restaurant where they put the fake food on the, on the plate. Yeah. It almost looks like that. It's so shiny and nice. <laughs> Your presentation is top notch. Yeah, really. And so into the fruit and veggie section we go. Now it is winter time, which I'm assuming that's why the strawberries are so expensive. This says 980 yen per pack. And a pack will get you anywhere from five to seven strawberries. It's like more than an American dollar per strawberry. So I'm assuming that's because of winter time, but they did get a display right in the front of the store. Okay. So I guess they look pretty and I guess people are buying them. And the grapes look so pretty too. Maybe it's the lighting in here or something. Everything's just so shiny and fresh looking. But uh, again, the price is pretty out of whack. That's 1800 yen for one bundle of grapes, which, wow. <laughs> I'm sure it tastes good. They look very plump. True. And so naturally, Ivana and I have been sticking to oranges and bananas. One of these bags costs you 500 yen, which is a fair price for a bag that size. And the bananas seem to be quite affordable, actually. So it seems pretty consistent that the fruits are more expensive than the veggies here. Certainly the cabbage is uh, a steal here in Japan, but we found a bunch of good deals on various packs of veggies, whereas the fruits seem to be a little bit more expensive. But of course, right at the front door, they've got some sushi here, pure Japanese style. And again, a Japanese person might say this is not the best sushi ever, but it looks like a million bucks. It only costs 800 yen. <laughs> it's kind of like, so perfect and so yeah. arranged uh for me and you it probably tastes good so pretty <laughs> it's so pretty right and even some sushi salad over here or something like that uh 600 yen looks amazing right wow <laughs> so colorful and so next up we can show you guys the bread section where we'll show you loaves of bread in a second but i guess the front of the store here is all pre-prepared food so this is like a little burger it's got a patty in it and it's got some cabbage and some mayonnaise looks like a chicken burger and for 270 yen i mean it's a lot cheaper than a mcdonald's burger in canada so it's probably good but the star of the show of the bakery section at least will be this uh not the first time ivana and i have seen this this is a noodle sandwich for 240 yen i mean it's affordable we've never tried it to be honest but this is something we've only seen in japan uh, noodle sandwich and they've even got single slices of pizza individually wrapped which uh, could be yummy although it might be stuck to the plastic inside 240 yen and uh, even a little American section here 
American flag, some corn pizza, is that? Something like corn pizza and an American flag for 400 yen. Uh, totally unique. I love all that prepared food and it seems like the Japanese grocery store manager is a master of lighting. <laughs> everything is so shiny in here. It's like it's my first day with new eyes and I'm like, wow, look how bright everything is. <laughs> I think the lighting is uh, the best I've seen in the whole world. And so usually we show you guys the cheapest loaf of bread, which I think is 100 yen. And it's a, it's a decent size, uh, six slices, which in Canada would be a half loaf, but a lot of Asia has the six slice loaf. 100 yen is the cheapest bread. And then from the bakery, we can go into the delicatessen, which again has some pre-packaged uh, sandwiches here, 300 yen, and then some bigger ones for 440. Uh, looking quite colorful and quite nicely packed. And still more, more pre-prepared food, even some dumplings here, 400 yen. That's a pretty good price for all those dumplings with the sauce pack inside. Yeah. Not bad at all. Typically, I'm very lucky. I get Ivana to cook because she's world class. But if I was a single guy, I mean, this would be a gold mine for me. Pick up your dinner, pre-packaged. Here you got some uh, chicken, chicken cutlet or maybe pork chop, 400 yen with a sauce bag on the side. This is a good deal. It's, it's quite good. Hey, check it out. Even some spaghetti. That's a great price, man. That's 370 yen for some pasta with sauce and a little bit of Parmesan sprinkled on top. Uh, come on, not bad at all. Or you can have it with a rice, omelet, and sauce on top. And somehow the sauce is not running off the side. It's like perfectly pooled up there. Uh, 400 yen. <laughs> I'm really impressed with all the prepackaged food. and <laughs> pre-prepared. It's, uh, it's everywhere. So much. Look, more and more and more. <laughs> Something for everyone in the Japanese pre-prepared section. Even... What's that, Ivana? Tokomiyaki. Tokomiyaki? Yeah. Looks like a seafood pizza or something. <laughs> Almost. With noodles, I see. With noodles on top. Something for everybody. <laughs> and so next up, we can do the meat section where naturally there's a huge fresh fish section where you can get tuna eyeballs, which by the way, those eyeballs are as big as baseballs. That might be dinner for two right there. Those are some big juicy tuna eyeballs. And not only that, you can also get some of this, which I'm gonna say is octopus tentacle. Uh, this one will cost you 760 yen. My feeling is, and I admit I'm out of my depth here, my feeling is there's food coloring in this. I don't know if it's true or not, but the color is so popping. It's like eye-catching, it's like boom. So maybe this is the actual color of octopus, or maybe, I mean, look how, look, how, look at that. It's like something you see digitally enhanced or something. <laughs> it looks so boing. But I don't know if that's uh, real or not because I'm not much of a octopus tentacle buyer. <coughs> and even the salmon looks quite beautiful. Although the label says it's farmed. So this is like a farm grown salmon. Uh, and I'm not sure if the prices are good or not. I don't buy too much fish, but it does look like a million bucks. <laughs> and believe it or not, this entire section is anchovies. So we're gonna go ahead and skip right past that, moving right along. Your favorite. <laughs> My least favorite. <laughs> and so, like I say, the fish section is huge. All the way from that corner, all the way to here. And the sign says fresh fish, but it could say seafood because it's got octopus and uh, everything under the ocean yeah. is in there. And so next up, we've got the fresh meat section, which should be interesting for two factors. One, because Japan has some world famous Kobe beef and yeah. Wagyu beef, but also because certainly in Canada and actually in a lot of the world, the meat prices are out of whack with the salaries and it's like a inflation crisis. So over here, we've got what looks to be the really beautifully marbled Japanese meat. And that's gonna cost you 1,450 yen for 250 grams and even more if you go over here. I mean, this looks so good. I don't know if you guys are meat eaters, but this looks like mouth-wateringly good for me. That'll cost you 4,300 yen. Okay, uh, seems expensive, but maybe we can get the, the lower quality, the less delicious one, <laughs> the less world famous one is more affordable. Oh, oh, look at that, that's interesting. This one's almost all fat and it's quite expensive. This probably tastes so good. 4,500 yen for 350 grams. I mean, it looks like a million bucks. I'd buy that if I had money. <laughs> that looks good. <laughs> and I guess this section is actually ready for the grill. So this one here, they've even got little X's in the meat with the knife to like get it ready to sizzle up. And now we're getting more affordable. This is 422 yen for 237 grams. This is a good price actually. 
and chicken ready for the grill 400 yen for 222 grams again a good price uh, i'm surprised that's quite affordable at least in my books <laughs> look at these freezers man they're so good or not freezer but chiller at the very least uh just left to right all the gradient of all the meat oh my gosh oh i'm hungry dude yo best advice i can give you never go to japanese supermarket when you're hungry because you're gonna leave broke <laughs> This one is domestic pork loin, thinly sliced. Good price, man. Oh, check that out. You can buy the drumettes or the two bone wings. They separate the wings into the two parts. This is the this is the two boner. Yeah. This is the one boner. Now, Ivana, what do you prefer, two boner or one boner? No. Keep in mind, there is a right answer. I like both. I think I like this one. Two bone better. I like two bone better. This, this one is more like a miniature drumstick. I like the two bone because it's a unique eating experience. And so my head has officially exploded. Now to be clear, I don't spend too much time in Canada anymore. I'm traveling with Ivana like 11 months of the year. But in my memory, the meat prices in Canada are like twice as much as they are here in Japan. Uh, maybe you guys can check the comments to confirm or deny my claim. Any Canadians down there can let you know. But I'm really impressed with a fully developed and very rich country like Japan having such affordable meat prices. Uh, and really beautiful meat also. <laughs> and so next up we can do milk and butter and eggs. Starting here with eggs, which are 10 pack, not 12. And this is the cheapest one for 258 yen for 10. Fair price. And then in terms of milk, I guess we're doing cartons here in Japan. And it looks like the cheapest carton will be 178 yen. Now it says half on the label, which makes me think it's cream. But according to Google Translate, this is milk and the half says something like half your daily supply of calcium or something like this. Um, and so I believe 178 yen for a carton is the cheapest milk. And I guess no Australian milk because quite often in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, we see Australian milk as the oh, good yeah. brand. No Australian here. Everything looks to be very Japanese milk. I wonder if it's from the same cow as those Kobe beef. No, no, no. Can't be. Good question. I think it's a meat cow or a milk cow, not both, but I'm not sure. And then in terms of the cheese section, it's relatively small, which is a pretty typical complaint that I have. Uh, in North America, we eat a lot of cheese, but at the very least, we can check some prices of some, like a block of cheese. And so 400 grams of red cheddar, which I guess is Australian, will cost you 968 yen. And that's a pretty standard price, whether it's mozzarella or gouda. 400 grams, about 970 yen. Okay, seems kind of fair and even some baby cheese for 138 yen. Okay, something new. And I guess now that I think of it, we're not seeing too many North American brands. No. Right, uh, for example, No Craft Singles, which is the iconic uh, fake cheese, but they do have World Select. I bet you is similar product, even kind of similar packaging with the blue. Oh, hold on, it is Craft. See that hidden craft on the back side there. So I guess they changed the brand or they put some uh, Japanese font on it at the very least, but it's the same maker who owns the uh, craft. Okay, fair. So 278 for a small pack of craft singles. And what better to pair with your cheese than some ice cold beer? Now, actually, Japan, I think they drink a lot of beer because they have a lot of their own brands. And I would dare say some of them are very good, including but not limited to Asahi Super Dry. So one can of Super Dry, this is a big can, 255. Okay, not the world's greatest price. <laughs> not on par with like a Hong Kong or something, but maybe the six pack will be cheaper. Six for 1350, which is a better deal than just buying a single can. I will say Super Dry might be one of my top beers. Now, if you guys have been watching our channel for a while, you'll know that for years I was saying Stella Artois is the best beer. And then I did a blindfold taste test and I could not ad identify which beer was Stella Artois. So I do love Asahi Super Dry, but who knows if my taste buds are playing tricks on me again. With that being said, you can see the beer section is huge. Both sides of the aisle, uh, long run of just beer. And we haven't even got to the whiskey and the wine. Oh my gosh, look at the size of the whiskey. That has got to be, let me guess, five liters? No, more than that, four liters. Four liters of whiskey. Holy jumping in a plastic bottle. And it's only 5,880 yen. 
Now, I don't know much about whiskey to know which brand is good. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. Oh, four liters of booze in a plastic bottle. This one is nearly half the price at 3,200. Uh, looks more like a Japanese brand. But I think this is evidence that Japanese people like to drink. They're selling, uh, they're selling whiskey by the, by the truckload. <laughs> they love to drink. And still two more aisles just of alcohol, including this one here, which is all wine left and right. Maybe we'll try to show you what the cheapest bottle of wine costs. Although there's a lot to go through. I might just have to guess at some point because, uh, oh my gosh, wine after wine after wine. This is a, this is a familiar brand. People might know this one. Uh, okay, that's like nine American dollars, I think. I think that's a pretty good price actually for wine. And this is a familiar brand people might know. Similar to Canada, I think. Yeah, maybe maybe similar to Canada-ish. Uh, cool, man. And right beside the alcohol section, I guess, is snacks. Now, this is all rice crackers, which I guess you can think of like a potato chip, but it's not so heavy. Yeah, it's from rice. It's from rice, but it still can be salty and crispy and kind of delicious. Uh, some of them are quite good, to be honest, although some of them are seafood, seaweed, octopus, and things that I don't love. But uh, a very typical snack here in Japan is the uh, rice cracker. And they also like stuff like this. I'm gonna say this is like a bean, like edamame or something. But they have a lot of peas or beans, or even like a, a, a broccoli snack, a lot of green snacks, it seems like, in here in Japan. And even some cauliflower puffs, which is something new. Now, you will not find Lay's potato chips here, which is a bit of a bummer. You will find Pringles, and even Pringles in a bag. I don't know how Pringles got so popular because they taste like sawdust and they're just awful. But somehow we find Pringles in more countries than Lay's sometimes. Yeah, Pringles has been exported out of North America and they're not good. Now, uh, they do have a 7-Eleven brand of potato chips, which are pretty good. Uh, Ivana and I tried this one. Could use a bit more salt, to be honest. <laughs> they're kind of like, more like a healthy snack. Whereas in North America, they're covered in salt, covered in powder, and they actually hurt your tongue. If you eat enough chips in Canada, your mouth starts to hurt. Sure. That's the way I like it. Uh, but the price is pretty good at two thirty-eight, and they even have a butter flavor, which we've never tried, but that's something interesting. Butter and soy sauce. Butter and potato soy sauce sticks. flavored potato chips. I mean, it could be good. Although surprising, it's the Seven Eleven brand because uh, I've never seen that in Canada. The Seven Eleven brand, <laughs> but they have it here in Japan, and it's very popular. And so typically we show you guys the various and unique flavors of Lay's, but this time we can only do Pringles. We got cheese with four E's, and then we've got seaweed, according to Google Translate. Uh, this one just called delicious, according to Google Translate, which let's try to guess what the ingredients are in delicious. Uh, I mean, it's red and it's got like a star on it or like a snowflake. But Google Translate just calls this delicious Pringles. So your guess is as good as mine. And then sour cream and onion, which is all familiar flavors, really. Nothing too unique and crazy. Maybe seaweed is somewhat unique, but a lot of Asia has that. And of course, it wouldn't be a supermarket tour without the sauce section. So naturally, lots of different soy sauce related sauces over here black and sweet and thick and garlic and all the different types they do have some jack daniels sauce which i guess is non-alcoholic uh it looks like it's not cheap also but uh something interesting here we got some mustard which you guys know I'm a big fan uh they got the s and b which is considerably cheaper than the yellow mustard heinz but they do have some mustard yeah, they also got this kind and they've also got what I'm led to believe is real mustard. This is like the spreadable uh, with a knife. And then I'm gonna say there's no ketchup. Well, hold on, pause. How could there be no ketchup? Is that ketchup? Must be another aisle. I'll be amazed if they're not selling ketchup in Japan because we've had ketchup here. Aha. Uh -huh. They do have ketchup. It's just on the next aisle over. 218 for your standard Heinz. Although Ivana and I have been buying this one, which is in a bottle, and then the bottle is in a bag for some reason, I don't know why. But uh, 168, and it's pretty good ketchup. It's got a strong vinegar flavor. Uh, I would say Japan has some thumbs up ketchup. Pause the video. Here we have Canada grade A maple syrup. Price is actually not bad if it's real maple syrup, and it seems to be, you can see how thick it is. 
Uh, I will give a quick public service announcement. Most maple syrup in the world is just corn syrup and sugar and some sort of maple flavoring. This does say 100% pure maple syrup, which means 100% of it came from a tree. Uh, decent price and Canadian product. <laughs> and so we can end off today with a Coke and Pepsi comparison. Seems like there's no Pepsi at this particular supermarket. Coke is pretty good price, 178 for a, a big jug and even some more Canadian stuff. Canada Dry here, 168, slightly cheaper. And I guess, like I said, no Pepsi. And they've even got some of their own, I guess uniquely Japanese. This is called Matsuya Cider. Uh, cheaper again 138 for a big jug and on the back it does say it is carbonated soft drink born in 1884 so this is a uniquely japanese soft drink don't get confused by the term cider i think it's just like a soda and i guess right beside the pop is this stuff here which according to google translate is a healthy drink that says bring health to your body uh, i guess it's made by asahi which is the same company that makes the beer but i guess this is some sort of health drink 138 Maybe it's a Gatorade alternative, I'm not sure. Uh, but tons of unique drinks here, whether it's this, which looks like water again, a bit cloudy, green dakara, or whether it's the Kalpis soda, which looks like it's carbonated and milky, sort of a unique combination. But uh, the list goes on in terms of unique Japanese drinks that at first glance, you wouldn't even know what they are if you're uh, like me. Oh, and check this out. We're gonna pay for our goods over here. She's putting them in another basket for us. Then I guess we'll go over there with our basket and we'll put them in our shopping bag ourselves. So even the bagging method is unique here in Japan. And so, final review of the Japanese supermarket. First of all, it truly was a supermarket. Yes. It seems like the Japanese shopping style is similar to Canada where you go to one store and you buy everything you need. They've got a huge pharmacy in the back. They're selling pencils and papers and things for school. They've got spatulas and pots and pans. They're selling KFC by the cash register and even a bakery where they've got all different cakes and even one cupcake look like noodles. Yeah. So something for everyone there in the supermarket. And I noticed that there's tons of employees there that are adults and well-dressed and very respectable. It seemed like every aisle had somebody working hard and it was like an adult uh, person which is sort of different from Canada. And the last thing I noticed, which is sort of similar to my impression of Japan in general, uh, just impressive and well done, organized, clean, loved it. Yeah, I have yeah. a good impression of Japan and I have a good impression of the supermarket. Something with the lights, I don't know, everything's everything, so beautiful. Yeah, everything, all the veggies, all the fish, they all look fresh. They look so good. And overall, the prices were pretty darn good, other than maybe some of the fruit, which I don't know if it's, uh, if it's uh, out of season or something, but other than the fruit, I was really impressed with meat prices and uh, veggie prices and snacks. Everything pretty good. Yeah. Loved it. There you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. And we've got our groceries here because Ivana is going to go make some soup because she's got a cold. Oh, let's all get to the comments and say, get better soon, Ivana. She's about to go to Harbin, the coldest place in the world, and she's getting sick. Oh, it's bad timing. <laughs> anyway, later, guys.